to six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Messix here to answer a viewer question. Today's conversation is going to be about parts availability for older equipment. Hey Neil, Luke from Wisconsin here with a cautionary tale followed up by a question. So back in March, my dad purchased a Grand L3130 with a backhoe, as is, from a dealer after selling his Mahindra a few years prior, partially due to the difficulty in finding parts for it. Naturally, we went straight to work with our Kubota and after putting it through its paces, we decided that we wanted to give it a fresh coat of paint. When we took off the loader mounts, we discovered that the casting that holds them on had multiple broken bolts. There are many signs, including JB Weld, to indicate that the dealership or the previous owner knew about the issue. Unfortunately, it was sold as is, so there wasn't much we could do about it. Fortunately though, due to COVID, I was home from optometry school and decided that I was going to fix this. After finding a used casting off of the salvage tractor, multiple orders from the Messick's parts department, and a lot of elbow grease, I got Humpty Dumpty back together again. Lesson learned, be very careful when buying a used tractor as is, even from a dealership. Now for my question. How long does Kubota provide parts for discontinued models, and how does that compare to other manufacturers? We are so glad that Kubota still provides every single part with little to no hassle. Hopefully we won't need any parts orders anytime soon, but it's great to know that we can still get them fast and for a fair price from you guys. Thanks. Thank you for taking the time to send such a well-formulated question and putting the effort into sending me an actual finished video. Thank you. It is fun and nice to watch. If you would like to send me a question, you can hit me up at YouTube at Messix.com. Gonna take a quick walk around the parking lot here today. This is not my usual, like, way that I do the videos, right? I know this is very natural for some people, but not for me. Um, when you go and you walk around the equipment lot down here, you're gonna see there's a lot of different machinery down here. Uh, sprayers and, and older tractors and a lot of hay tools. You know, the, the lifespan of a lot of the machines that we buy um, can be decades, right? I mean, you'll even find some stuff out here that's 60, 70 years old every once in a while for some of these older tractors. And a lot of that equipment we can still get parts for, um, remarkably enough. And that's what really helps to maintain the value of a lot of this stuff. If you're looking at parts availability, it's a question not just for being able to continue and fix the things that you own, but also for investing in good equipment that you know is going to retain some value, because a lot of that value is based upon your ability in order to continue to get parts for your equipment and fix it if you need to. Parts availability, though, from the manufacturer level is really a business decision at the end of the day, right? If you go through and you look at the machines that have really good parts availability, it's not that way because of the benevolence of the manufacturer that made it, right? There's gonna be a couple of different drivers of why that machine has good parts availability. We're gonna talk about that here briefly. Standing here beside our used New Holland disc binds, and you can see for even a model 1411, we've got one, two, three, four, five used ones sitting out here in our lot and used ones that we're gonna need to be able to continue to maintain and sell to somebody else and have more good productive time from them in the field. These things have fantastic parts availability and one of the reasons for that is because New Holland is the dominant player in the hay tools business. When you go and you look at the machines that are out in the field, New Holland has dominated most of your hay tool attachments for a long, long time and these disc binds are very, very popular and the parts availability for this kind of stuff is partly driven by that popularity, right? Parts is a big profit center for dealerships and it is for the manufacturers as well. And so if there's enough machine population out there, that company is gonna be incentivized to continue to have those parts available in order to sell them to you, right? If those machines are really uncommon and it costs the manufacturer more money to offer those parts up than what they can make in selling them to you, and they're generating dead stock on their shelves and that kind of stuff, trying to have things on hand that they're not turning, they're not gonna have a whole lot of incentive in order to want to continue offering that part support. And so what you'll see happen at that point then will be that the manufacturer suddenly will take all of the inventory for those obsolete and older models models and dump them off to third party warehouses and that kind of stuff that will buy parts for pennies on the dollar. It won't be available from the manufacturer anymore, but knowing who those sources are, 
is help, what helps separate a really good parts department like ours from one that doesn't quite meet the bar in the same way. So probably the most important thing that you're gonna find in ensuring good parts availability is popularity of the equipment itself. Popularity of a machine certainly isn't enough in and of itself. When you dive into some of the really big ag equipment or some specialty implements and that kind of thing, no matter what you do, you're never going to have, say, the thousands and tens or hundreds of thousands of machines out in the field that it takes to really have a good business model around part support. So the next thing that I can say that you can look to to know am I going to be able to find parts for these things or not is to look for equipment that uses a lot of off-the-shelf parts where the manufacturer of that machine is pulling things from commodity suppliers in order to build that equipment and isn't necessarily reinventing the wheel and going through and coming up with a new type of valving or something on these sprayers or a different odd type of nozzle or something that you don't see elsewhere. When we walk around things like these sprayers and we see parts from say T-Jet on a sprayer made by Fast, you know that you're always going to be able to go back to T-Jet to be able to get those nozzles, say, 30 and 40 years down the road, even if Fast stops actually keeping those on their own shelves, which is doubtful for a sprayer company. One of the final considerations I give to parts availability is who actually built the piece of equipment that you're considering. Now, you mentioned Mahindra here in the video, and I've got one sitting right here on our lot, too, that we traded in. Uh, part of the reason why these things are so notoriously problematic for parts availability is because they build very little of the equipment that they actually sell. So this machine sitting behind me here comes from a company called TYM out of South Korea, even though this Indian company, Mahindra, is putting their name on it. They buy all these bits and pieces from other vendors and then assemble them into what is that final product. Now that, that level of assembly can vary. Many times it's as simple as a sticker on the side of the hood. But anytime that you end up with these extra relationships in here, you can expect one, your parts costs are gonna be more expensive because you got another mouth to feed. And you've got a further availability question that says, you know, does the Mahindra in this case, whose name is on the side of the hood, continue to have the purchasing power with TYM down the road, or even continue to maintain that business relationship that they're going to be able to continue to get you parts. Now, you'll find a lot of times guys online will try to kind of justify some of these purchases by saying well I can always go back to TYM in order to find those pieces but doing that can be vastly more complicated and difficult than what you might think that it is to get into those parts catalogs determine what the proper number was sub it over back to the old vendor even being able to domestically source it while they might continue to offer some of those models in other countries they might not even be here in the US anymore so anytime that we add additional companies to this supply chain, it becomes that much more difficult in order to find those parts. And this happens a lot. Um, I'm picking on Mahindra here a little bit, but you'll see this with a lot of the major tractor companies too, where they will reach out to other implement companies and put their names on the sides of things, trying to be everything to every customer, right? You're gonna be able to buy that implement and your proper color of paint no matter what. But those kinds of things do ultimately lead to more parts availability questions over the long term. I'm gonna to toot my own horn here a little bit. Uh, we are very, very proud of our parts department. They're an absolute world-class dealership parts department. Uh, a lot of what these guys do goes far beyond just the simple knowledge to take a computer program and look up a part number for your machine. There's a lot of things that they pick up over the years when it comes to sourcing things and finding difficult to match up items or diving back into older machines knowing what part numbers can be swapped out with stuff on newer equipment with improved items. It's a lot of knowledge that these guys develop over the years that they in and of themselves can be a huge component to this parts availability equation. So absolutely don't underestimate that. The dealership can have a huge impact on your perception of what parts availability is like just based upon their skill level and being able to locate and source these things for you. So if you have parts needs that we can help with, you're shopping for a piece of equipment, uh, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com. Neil from Essex here to answer a viewer question with <laughs> Neil Possible. It is actually pretty surprising when you dive into certain ag... ag, 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 ag. Now, popular...